Over the last few years, I've had a problem where my monitors just did not look the way that I knew they should look whenever I am creating YouTube videos or playing video games or consuming content such as movies. I go to my cell phone, it looks amazing for say a YouTube video, and then I go to watch it on my computer or even my TV hooked up to my computer, and it just does not look the way I'm fairly certain it should look. Now there's a ton of things that could affect this. Obviously the color settings on the panel, such as the monitor or the TV can affect that, but other things can affect it as well. In Windows, things like color profiles that you can actually download the drivers from, from the manufacturer's website, which I'll show you about, is very important, as well as making sure the right color profile is set on the monitor. So for example, from working in Adobe, maybe setting it to Adobe sRGB is a good idea to make sure that my colors are accurate on my monitor also having that color profile installed and just a few other things that you can take into consideration to make sure it's going to work properly for you. To go ahead and say that the problem that I've had recently has been very frustrating because I've known about all this other stuff, but I still couldn't get my colors to look great and it was very annoying. So we'll talk about that in just a second. What's going on guys? Chad here from How To Tech, the channel dedicated to helping you take your tech to the next level. And today we're gonna to be talking about the color accuracy of the thing that you sit in front of whenever you're interfacing with your computer, and that is going to be the monitor. This makes a big deal. If you've ever had an upgrade for a monitor, you know that a monitor with better color and better resolution and even frame rate is always nice because it just makes it a smoother, more dynamic, more detailed experience in front of your computer. Now, if you've been struggling with color, then I'm gonna cover a few things that hopefully can help you figure out and diagnose and troubleshoot and you know, just figure out what's causing your monitor to not look the best that it possibly can because there's quite a few things on that. With that being said, I'm not gonna go into a super ton of detail on every specific topic, but I do wanna mention that because it is, like I said, very annoying and it's something I've personally dealt with. So let's get started first with the problem that I've had, and this has been so annoying. Um, I've got an Acer monitor over here on my left that I got from one of my friends, and it looks pretty good. I've got an ASUS, what's supposed to be sRGB color accurate monitor in front of me, and these are both 1080p panels, and this ASUS one looks a lot nicer than the one that I previously had as a secondary monitor. But whenever I got this ASUS, or this Acer monitor to pair with the ASUS one I have, um, I noticed something. This monitor looked really washed out and I could not figure out why. I've tried installing color profiles, which we'll talk about in a second, and even setting the color settings on the monitor itself, and it just did not work properly. It just wasn't giving me the image that I thought I should be getting out of the monitor. And it's supposed to be, like I said, a color accurate monitor. And that's what was irritating me so much. It came down to one thing. The refresh rate of the monitor was not set to the native refresh rate. And that's what caused the problem. So this monitor is natively a 75 Hertz refresh rate monitor. And that essentially means that's how many times the monitor is going to refresh the frames on the screen per second, which should be 75 times. It was set to 60. And for whatever reason, reason with my monitor, whether that is over the graphics card, how that is, you know, processed by the monitor. I don't know what caused it, but it is something to keep in mind. So if you have a problem with your monitor not looking good, maybe make sure inside of your window settings that it's set to the right refresh rate or Hertz rate that it should be set to because mine wasn't and that caused my problem. Setting that fixed all of the problems I had. I even reset the monitor back to uh, factory settings and it fixed everything. So that is awesome and that is a good place to start. So for those of you that don't know how to do that, I'm gonna go ahead and change over to my computer and let's go ahead and show you how to do so. So simply just right click the desktop on a Windows computer and click on display settings. And you'll go to the monitor. And if you're on Windows 11, it may be a little bit different than Windows 10 or older versions, but typically you'll find something down here of being able to adjust, say the refresh rate. If not, you might be able to find like advanced display settings so we can see display information in refresh rate. And we can see that this is set to my ASUS monitor and we can see it's currently set to 60 Hertz. So if I set that to 74.99, which is the native resolution, what it's gonna look like to me is a more color accurate 
display. And it actually looks amazing for me right here. It's not anything you're gonna be able to see directly on the recording, but my colors right in front of me just got so much more vivid and it looks amazing. So if you are having this problem, maybe setting that there will help you out. So the second thing I wanna talk about is specifically the hardware connections of the cables between the graphics card or your computer and your monitor, because those are very, very important. Using cheap cables that maybe have signal loss can cause a lot of problems for you, as well as using adapters that may be cheap and may be somewhat failing on you. So keep that in mind as well, and maybe just replace a cable could solve your problem for you. A problem I've had in the past is using, um, I believe, VGA to DVI converters, and even just you know replacing that with a direct DisplayPort to DisplayPort cable has solved problems for me as well. So keep in mind that it could be hardware, it could also be software, and now let's go ahead and talk about drivers. So drivers are extremely important for a computer, right? You plug in a mouse and it may automatically just use what's called plug and play. But we do run into those situations every now and again where we plug in a device and it's not natively supported. So we have to install drivers. Sometimes it may download on its own or install whenever it's plugged in, which is great. And other times that doesn't happen. So you may have opened a monitor before and noticed that if it's an older one, possibly, that there was a CD or a DVD in the box and you're like, why do I need um, a CD or DVD support disc for my monitor? Well, typically those actually include the drivers for the monitor, something that I didn't even really know or pay attention to um, a long time ago. And it's something that I keep in mind now. So essentially you can go to the manufacturer's website and whenever you go there, we can see, I see VA27EHE, this is my monitor. Simply go to the product page and we can actually go to the support tab for that monitor and we should get downloads. And we have drivers and tools. We'll select our operating system and Windows 10 64 bit should work for me and click download. So what you'll wanna do is download the driver and extract that. And once you've extracted that driver, we'll see that we actually have a driver folder in here. Now, these include color profiles that are gonna be extremely important for making sure that your monitor is color calibrated. And now I have to say that it's not exactly color calibration. It's setting up the color profile for what your monitor is capable of and letting Windows know that and applying it to your monitor. This is not a true fix for your monitor being super adjusted in custom settings or coming from the factory and not a really good calibrated state. If you want something that professional, you can actually go look up um, different manufacturers and see which panels that they sell or what monitors that they sell that come from the factory pre-calibrated. So for an example, instead of them just building the monitor, doing a simple calibration and sending it out, they actually have somebody sit there, they put a calibration monitor on the screen and then they test it and make sure it's color accurate. And that's really nice, but you will pay a premium for that. So keep that in mind. So I've got this here. Did I extract that? I believe I did. Yeah, so we've got our folder there. And what we wanna do now is just get everything out of our way. So now we wanna click on the start menu and search for color management. And anything with this kind of icon right here will take us to that color management section. And this is where we can add the drivers for your monitor. So select which monitor you want to use. So for example, you would have to figure out exactly which one that is. Um, if you're not sure, you can go to your display settings and we can see that this one right here, if we click identify, I can see on my screen that this is monitor one and that is my ASUS monitor. So I know that. Then we can make sure display one is selected and what we'll wanna do is click add and then we're going to, I believe, click browse and go to our download section. If I can find that, this PC downloads and we're going to grab our driver, this ICM file right here. And once you've added that, we should be able to go in here and find that, yes, driver right here and click OK. And now that we have that set, we can actually click, I believe, set as default profile, and that will set it for just that monitor. So we know we're good there. So our monitor is now set. So after you've added that, be sure to remove any other drivers that you don't need specifically for your monitor. 
and you should be able to close and reboot and your color profile should now be set for your monitor. So all right, guys, that's going to be all for this video. If you enjoyed, you know what to do. Go ahead, destroy that like button, get subscribed and turn on notifications for future videos from How To Tech. Let us know in the comment section down below if you learned anything about your monitor and getting accurate color from it, because like I said, this is something I figured out um, from a lot of research and it's helped me out quite a bit. Thank you guys so much for watching. This has been Chad from How To Tech, helping you take your tech to the next level, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.